what's up beautiful people listen to Arima. welcome to the channel today we're going to be checking this video and it's titled nigerian public did not see the point of prince harry and megan mega Markle's trip <laughs> this is interesting i'm excited to check this one out to hear what the pop nigerian public have got to say i'm nigerian by the way but yeah this would be really interesting let's check it out Joining me now is writer and broadcaster Esther Kraku. Esther, we have spoken at length about Harry's visit to the UK. Turns out he wasn't quite as maligned by his family uh, to the extent that he made out. Yeah, so we, we know that when Prince Harry came to the UK, it was actually his team that briefed the press about the fact that he wasn't able to see the king. And wow. in his uh, sort of announcement, he alluded to the fact that the king's diary was too busy to make room for him and that he hopes to see him next time. Now, we know that it's not entirely true because reports have come out that the king actually did offer Harry um, the opportunity to stay at a royal residence um, instead of staying at a hotel, which would, of course, come with security, not the automatic armed security that the the prince has been uh, hoping to get, um, but a certain degree of security. Now, we know that Prince Harry has insisted on staying in hotels when he comes to the UK because he believes he can move in and out anonymously and that it, it allows for sort of better levels of protection. Um, but it does beg the question as to why he chose to refuse mm. uh, staying at a royal residence. If he stayed at St. James, St. James, St. James's Palace, for example, he would have been right next to Clarence's um, house and he would have been able to see the king, even if briefly. Um, but the fact that he chose to stay at a hotel, hotel and then brief the press um, is kind of indicative that he's trying to make a point. Um, we know that he's still engaged in his battle with the High Court over, or uh, well, the Home Office, um, over his refusal, uh, his, his, them refusing him access to automatic um, armed security. And that's the reason why he and his wife mainly and his children haven't come to the UK um, at all, really. Um, and we also know that when Harry has applied for um, armed security and given notice of him coming to the UK, it's been refused, um, mainly on the grounds that they don't think it's important enough or that, it, you know, he his presence in the UK would pose a high enough risk for him to merit that. Mm. Um, so unfortunately, he's had to rely on private security like many other celebrities here in the UK. But uh -huh. we know that's a sticking point for him. So what I suspect is he was trying to make a point with his father um, by saying that, actually, I will stay at a hotel because the security is not good enough for me. I think he's trying to make a point that he he believes that he should only be able to to, to be in the uk um in the way that he wants when he gets the kind of armed security that he wants um he also believes that the fact that there's a kind of royal representative on ravec the the uh committee responsible for armed security for the royal family uh, he believes that actually if the royal family wanted it to happen and wanted him to have access to armed security they could let it happen uh, or they could make it happen but I don't think he's understanding the amount of power that members of the royal family have. Uh, the Queen herself, the late Queen, said that she wanted Harry and Meghan to be entitled to automatic security. But unfortunately, that's not even a decision up to the Queen. Um, so I, I think Harry's anger is a bit uh, misplaced. But it does it does show a different side of the coin because we know that there was no briefing from the, ro the royal household. It was all from Prince Harry's team. And that, again, mm. brings up the issue of trust because he's clearly trying to put out a nat narrative and say that actually the King couldn't fit me into his busy schedule. But actually, the King is also undergoing cancer treatment. And exactly. if he did offer a royal re a residence, a proper royal residence, I'm assuming somewhere close to Clarence House. Uh, that is a sign that the, the king is trying to reach out and reach for Harry out. to Thank brief the you. press and say, actually, it was the king who couldn't make time for me instead of him saying he refused to stay at a royal residence does paint a different picture. And it's probably going to show why uh, relations with the royal family are not going to, to warm up anytime soon. It's, it's Harry's way or the highway. <laughs> and you see the problem? They want to control the narrative. They want it to feed their book. At the same time, they don't want to be part of the royal family. They want the royal security. Like, make it make sense. It's not a, it's not a one leg in, one leg out. You either in or you're out. Now, is you see the um, statement or whatever. So it's not like <coughs> clashing or bring putting two people's head together. That is what they are trying to do, which is not even making sense. So if they are making a caricature of the royal family, wow. People are watching. Have they forgotten? Because this is not even making sense. Let's just be honest. Because anybody who would do their family like this, then remember that at the slightest moment, if they take on a new family, they will do the exact same. And let us not forget that they've got children, they've got kids. If their kids decide to turn on them like this, I hope they are also they will be happy. Because, yeah, 
they want it their way they want the security their way they want to go out and do everything publicly their way it is quite understandable we get it but remember that there are also people who are calling the shots so so remember that as you also want things your way others have plans or things in um or, 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 or others also have things in place so it don't think that you have to scatter other uh, destroy others or scatter other people's plans and make it fit your narrative it doesn't work like that it doesn't want to be with his uh, family it doesn't want to stay in the royal residence but yet it wants the royal security like make it make sense from where how where are they coming from <laughs> oh jesus christ this is funny but it's not funny but let me know what you think about this and also i love esther because she says things the way it is but yeah let's go on a highway <laughs> and the fallout from the not royal royal tour of nigeria also continues commentators have been pretty scathing this week haven't they Yes, yeah, so the reaction has been quite mixed. Um, so there have been people that did go to Nigeria um, to see out the royal tour, and they said, you know, the people around the, the Sussexes were quite, you know, happy with them, and they were quite excited. But, you know, the, the move from the general public was, why is this happening? Why is the Nigerian military spending all this money? You know, Nigeria is not a particularly very well-developed mm -hmm. country. There's a lot of poverty yes. in the country. So they didn't really see the kind of point of this, especially because they're not representing any, the, the United Kingdom. They're just there on sort of a private tour um, for their charity. Uh, but it, it, it's been quite mixed, I would say. I mean, this is probably as good as it gets for the Sussexes. The question is, what next? They can't keep going back exactly. to Nigeria. Um, there have been rumors that they have their sights set on, on, on Ghana, which is, is my home country. Um, but again, they might get a different reception because Ghana doesn't send delegates for the Invictus Games. So the question is, what excuse exactly. would they use to, to do these kind of quasi-royal tours? You can't always hark back to Megan's 43% Nigerian heritage. I mean, if she goes to Azerbaijan, is she going to feel at home there too? Um, so the question is, how are they going to, to facilitate these sort of semi-royal tours? Or is it just going to be the one-off kind of... Uh, press bonanza that they they seem to be to be going down maybe they'll be trying to to push any kind of new media content that they they come out with but again the the markets that they that, that seem to warm up to them particularly sub-saharan africa and potentially um east asia they, they probably wouldn't be that keen or really care if they do any sort of media um stuff because all the kind of media gold is gone they've said everything they wanted to say about the royal family anything to do with their farming and their chicken coops on montecito probably won't drum up as much hype or interest as they think mm. And, but that begs a broader question, doesn't it, about how are these decisions made by the Sussexes? Who's driving yeah, exactly. these various initiatives and the way that they do them? The suggestion is that uh, Harry's a bit of a passenger here. Is that fair to say? Well, one thing we do know is that the decisions are, are clearly made in-house. There's, there's a certain lack of finesse that you can see is just being made by people that don't have the, the benefit of, of, of the royal firm and, and all the kind of expertise that, that goes with it. Um, you can definitely see a heavy hand by Meghan in a lot of the decisions mm -hmm. that they make. I mean, when she was part of the royal family as an active working member of the royal family, um, one of the things that was clear that she did get in terms of what she wanted was the tour of South Africa. Um, it's something that she pushed for. Uh, and, and you can see that in a lot of the kind of the way that their engagements are done, she's really kind of at the forefront. Yes. You see Harry sort of melting into the background when she was in Nigeria and she was, you know, co-hosting that uh, Women in Leadership conference and talking about her Nigerian heritage. It was very much Megan center stage. And you can understand why she's an actress. She's had uh, a lot of time being around sort of celebrities Thank and you. kind of polishing her, her media mm -hmm. persona. Harry's just kind of in the run of the mill very average english guy and um, that's been trotted along because he's the the son of the now king uh, so that's that's the perception that many people are going uh, are having of of the couple now the question is how much of that is also uh, kind of in in the natural dynamic of their marriage so does megan lead as much on, on on the public end as she does on the private end people are, uh, yes, question, yeah. uh, are questioning that she is obviously a headstrong woman she's, she's she seems very confident she knows what she wants but you know uh, you can't have two leaders in, no, in, or two two pilots flying Thank a plane. You. you have to have one pilot and co-pilot. So people are questioning the dynamic of Meghan and Harry's relationship and how that will bode. Um, obviously, they have 
try to curate a particular image for themselves after they've left the royal family. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how that would affect their their own personal life as well and their marriage. They just celebrated their sixth wedding anniversary. Um, it feels like just yesterday they got married on that really beautiful summer day here in in, in England. Um, so you know questions are are being asked about the dynamic of their relationship and who really wears the the trousers. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, we love Tatler here on this show, no lie, but its latest front page has a portrait of Princess Catherine, which has had pretty mixed reviews. It's not for me personally. What's your view? Um, I, I would have to agree. So because of, of, of Princess Catherine's uh, in, engagement in the sort of early years um, initiative, I actually thought it was drawn by one of the, the, the toddlers or, or kindergarten children uh, that she she's helping to, to, to improve their lot in life. I didn't actually know it was... It was painted by an actual mm. artist, a fully grown human being. Um, but it has come under fire because many people say it doesn't look like her. I mean, if it, if it wasn't for the dress that she, wearing, she's yeah. very famous for wearing, many people wouldn't actually know that. And, I, you know, following the, the controversy over the king's most Portraits. recent portrait, which looks like he was uh, like a bat out of hell, uh, this is <laughs> a bit <laughs> underwhelming. Many people are asking if, if the royal family are, are just being slighted by these 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 portraits that keep popping up that don't show them in the best light, um, but it, you know that the likeness of that portrait is 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 really quite poor. It really looks like something that a school child would have drawn. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't what I was expecting. That's for sure. Esther Kraku, as always, thank you so much for joining us. I love Esther and so please, this is for Esther because she says things the way it is. But let's even talk about this because exactly it looks like uh, Megan is the one calling the shot with uh, calling the shot in, in this. She's the one taking the lead. Exactly the question or the thoughts. Who exactly is now taking the lead in private? Because we know one has to be the leader and the other one has to follow in the family. But obviously, a tour to Ghana is gonna be interesting because lots of people will be wondering, like, okay, what? excuse just like what esther said which is true so what excuse is she gonna use to go to ghana and say okay is their primary visit or their reason for visiting let's see how that plays out but honestly this portrait when i saw this portrait the exact same i had a mixed feeling i i almost did not recognize princess princess catherine but i was just looking at it i'm like yo this looks different and exactly lots of people have actually said it that it looks like what a toddler or a, or a um, child would draw but i've always said it that especially when it comes to the royal family if they if if there's if, if they present a certain image to us i mean this is something they must have thought through for them to present this because if they didn't like it then i don't think they will make this uh, in public but let me know what you think about this Do you, what are your thoughts exactly regarding the portrait of princess catherine and exactly the h and m i really love your thoughts on on those because yeah i've said it before like the h and m they always want to present a, a likable image and yeah Megan is an is a trained actress, so she's studied and known how to act in public and also it's almost like never to be caught on fresh. And that is the image she portrayed the frontier. So lots of and I've always said it that like lots of people are watching, people can see for themselves and people analyze and know what is going on. So it's not like when people say these things, they are not saying this from what they can see. This is not even like okay, they are sugarcoating anything. This is evident what people can see, and she's trained. She like whenever you see her, she's almost like camera ready, it's always like ready for the shot, ready for pose, and all of that. So it's just like the public image, picture perfect image frontier that they want to pr present. So I mean, it may not also be shocking or surprising that she is also the one call controlling the shot or calling the shots in the family as well. But let me know what you think about it. I really love your honest contribution. You can share other useful information you think might be really helpful. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and all of that stuff. And until next time, see you in the next video.